Thank you. Hello. It's very kind of you. I think about emojis more than the average person. <laughs> when I say the word keyboard, you probably think of something like this, the standard QWERTY keyboard. But when I think of a keyboard, I think of this, the emoji keyboard. While the QWERTY keyboard was designed to work around the physical limitations of the typewriter, the emoji keyboard was born in an era without these restrictions. Yet as popular as QWERTY is, it's now used on less than 20% of phones around the world. And which keyboard's in use on 100% of phones? The emoji keyboard. Over the past 20 years, emojis have gone from a niche Japanese experiment to a global phenomenon. The media loves to refer to emoji as the universal language. But is it? One thing that is true is that the emoji keyboard we use today is the result of more meetings and more decisions than the QWERTY keyboard has ever seen. For instance, you know the emoji of the salsa dancing lady? She has an official name. Her name is Dancer. And for this emoji alone, I've spent countless hours over the last four years of my life documenting how she's used and how she's changed. She's been through a lot. <laughs> and it's not just her, though. All emojis have a history. And the set of emojis we have on our phones today is no accident. Have you ever noticed how there's so many emojis for the weather? There's a reason for this, and it's to do with where emojis were invented, Japan. If you remember back to the late 1990s, text messaging was taking off around the world. And yet something about these messages posed a particular challenge in Japan. You see, st writing a standard letter in Japan would involve starting with something about the weather, or the season, or the health of your recipient. It's rude not to. But how do you fit that into a 160-character text message? Right, emojis were the answer. And many of the emojis we use today were direct descendants of this original emoji set from Japan. Now, you might be thinking, didn't we already have emoticons in 1998? Well, yes, but emojis were little pictures at a time when other phones were making faces by turning punctuation on its side. Emojis were a clever hack that they treated these characters like additional Japanese characters on the basic phones of the day. And so when you sent an emoji of a girl, it wouldn't actually send the image of a girl. It would just send a little code to say, insert the girl emoji here. And when that emoji would go to the other end, to another phone, that phone would display that emoji with its own image. It did mean that they could look a little bit different depending on your type of phone. And actually, what, one thing that would happen is that some phones didn't use the same code for each emoji, so that girl could turn into something else entirely. <laughs> and yet, as frustrating as that must have been, people still loved them. And so when Google wanted to bring Gmail to Japan in 2008, they quickly found that emoji might be their downfall. Google's research found that people considered messages without emojis to be dry. The term dry mail came up in, the, in, the, in their conversations. They'd say, an emoji-less message is dry mail. One Google engineer found that emojis were considered the best way to apologize. That's what this guy is for. And so it quickly became clear that if Google wanted to launch Gmail in Japan, it had to support emoji. So Google worked with standards bodies to make emojis work in a way that was compatible with the outside world. There was already a system in place at this time called Unicode. It had been around since the early 90s, making sure that text works when sent from one country to another. And given that emojis in Japan were treated like text, it made sense to use this Unicode standard. Now, all was going well with the effort until one emoji stood out to Google's team in the US. Now, this is the pile of poo emoji. Actually, at the time, it looked like this on Japanese phones. It even had these little animated flies. <laughs> <laughs> and this emoji was considered absolutely essential to the emoji set. Engineers in Google had to argue the case to say that removing this emoji would be like removing a letter of the alphabet from the QWERTY keyboard. And so after considerable debate, 
this poo made it into the final emoji set. And because emojis have become part of this Unicode standard, it meant that any company could now use them. These are some of the poos on different phones. <laughs> There's the separate matter of why some poos have eyes and others don't, <laughs> but I do have to move on, I'm so sorry. <laughs> now, when Apple brought emojis to the iPhone, it was the first time many of us outside of Japan had seen them. And we thought they were pretty cute, but we didn't think too much more about them. Until a few years later, a stunning realization was made. See if you can spot it. Right, they're all white. Well, except this guy. <laughs> Every human emoji except the turban-wearing man was white. And now that emojis were in use globally, it wasn't going to stand. In hindsight, it's probably pretty weird that we could only send a white boy or a white girl or a white man or a white woman. And so a decision was made. Unicode, the standards group I mentioned earlier, they made a recommendation. They said white was out and yellow was in as the new default skin tone for all human emojis. <laughs> the idea was to pick something neutral that could be used more like the original smiley, representative of anyone. But as noble as that intention might have been, a lot of people didn't consider yellow to be truly neutral. Years of conditioning from a certain yellow family taught us that yellow isn't actually neutral, it's white too. <laughs> Somehow, a system had been set up where white is white and yellow is also white. Some companies thought, we'll try and diversify this default. Microsoft tried grey emojis as the neutral skin tone, but <laughs> every, everybody hated those. <laughs> Others considered saying that blue or purple would be truly neutral, that that could be used and it wouldn't be representative of any particular group. But who wants a blue baby emoji? <laughs> no, matter, no matter how racially neutral that could be. And so yellow was chosen as the default skin tone on most phones, but we also got the choice to change it. Problem solved, right? Look at all this diversity. But notice anything that's also a bit off about this group of fit, young, racially diverse emojis? Right, they're all men. But there are women too. And as of 2016, this is what they were doing. Two thousand and sixteen. <laughs> so while the men had jobs and were playing sports, <laughs> the women were having massages and haircuts and getting married. And like the all white emojis of twenty fifteen, the gender disparity of emoji in twenty sixteen really wasn't ideal. But this time there was a precedent. What do you do about a lack of representation in emoji? Well, you add more emojis to the ever-growing emoji pyramid. Sometimes it's hard to figure out where to draw the line. I mean, just because a white guy like me might say that yellow is neutral enough to represent anyone, does that mean we should all agree? Central to this question of which new emojis are added is the Unicode Consortium. It's made up of companies like Apple and Google and Microsoft. They have to work together to make sure that text works from my computer to your computer or from my phone to your phone. I'm on the committee at Unicode that's dedicated to the planning of emoji updates. And we meet every single week. And because of the way emojis work, these companies do have to agree on which new emojis to support before adding them to your phones. And so yes, there is a room on the west coast of America where Apple, Google, Microsoft, and others meet to discuss whether to add an emoji for broccoli, <laughs> or redheads, or which of the dinosaurs are deserving of their own emoji. A T-Rex is the answer to that. <laughs> and while I am on that committee, I would like to absolve myself from some of the pretty useless looking emojis. <laughs> they are there for a reason. Remember the Windings font of the 1990s? It had a, a less popular sequel called Webdings. And one of the people behind this font was a man called Vincent Conair. He worked in, type, in the typography department at Microsoft. Actually, this guy is the guy who designed Comic Sans. So you know he knows his stuff. <laughs> okay. 
Now, Microsoft had this big list of icons to create for web things, and one of them was called Jump. Vincent thought it would be pretty great if he designed it to look like the man on the front cover of his album from the specials. You might notice the similarity when you see his final design. Little did Vincent know that one day this character would become an emoji known as man in business suit levitating. <laughs> Just like the original emojis from Japan were added to this Unicode standard for compatibility in 2008, many of the Webdings characters were also added to this standard in 2014. And so man in business suit levitating hit our emoji set. Here he is. <laughs> and because he's human too, he gets the skin tones as well. <laughs> now this brings us back to that dancing lady. Here's how she's looked on various phones over the years. Just like the original Japanese emoji set, where the emojis would look different on one phone or another, that's still how emojis work today. The idea should be that the concept is the same, but the appearance will vary. Another emoji that's been around for just as long as the dancer is this one, the pistol. Now, Apple used to be fine with this emoji. It, it's on all phones. But one day they decided, no, we don't want a gun on our shiny iPhone keyboard anymore. And so, Apple alone don't have the ability to boot this out of being an emoji. But what they do control is how it looks on their own phones. So one day, Apple released an update in 2016, and it changed this pistol to look like a fluorescent green water pistol. <laughs> now, this brings up some interesting points. Firstly, people were mad. In my years running Emojipedia, I've not seen such a negative reaction to any emoji change. And while Apple might not want their users sending guns, is it any better when an iPhone user <laughs> sends a water pistol, <laughs> and everybody else in the world still sees a gun? <laughs> now, it's interesting, because who thought, yes, guns are bad, but it's totally fine still having the cigarette, the knives, the bomb, the bloody syringe? I mean... <laughs> It's, just, it's something that we should think about, that the world's first universal keyboard that we've ever seen, it's so fractured, it's so bizarre, and yet this is why we love it. When we think of a design by committee, we normally think of something that's bland and boring and pleases no one. But emoji is somehow the opposite. It's quirky, it's imperfect, and yet there's something for everyone. Well, nearly everyone. These are some emojis in active development right now. And so, next time you look at your phone to type an emoji, I hope you'll wonder what its story is, because I'm sure it has one. Thank you. <laughs>